and we're back. We survived, Richard. What did we survive? We survived my being a clumsy idiot. Yes. Yes. I'm very sorry for the long delay. Um, I may or may not have basically dropped a pot of honey on my laptop and broke it. So this is the new laptop and it's just taken us a little bit of setting up. Hi, this is the White Walker. I'm Richard. I'm here with my <laughs> wife, Rebecca. Hello. <laughs> and we're bringing to you game eight of the White Walker Deck Tournament 2. Yes. So uh, in case you've forgotten after the last two weeks, however long it was, um, we've got 16 different decks and 16 different people. We've done bracket one. We've got the top <coughs> eight. Um, well, we've got the bracket one top eight half ready to go and this is the last game of the bracket two swiss and then um in the next game you will be able to see who is in the top eight of both sides um so if you don't want any spoilers you don't want to look at the screen at the beginning basically um but in this game we have stark faith um which was submitted by Voita and we have um, Night's Watch Hollow Hill submitted by Ivan. So we'll have a look at the Hollow Hill deck now. So Richard you sort of um, talked to Ivan about this deck a little bit didn't you? No. Didn't you? No I just asked him to send us a deck. <laughs> didn't you um, specify what kind of the kind of deck that you were no. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I said, um, yeah, we're doing the deck tournament. Send us a Night's Watch deck. And he said, what agenda do you want? He said that they pretty much do all the same thing. So I said, yeah, okay. <laughs> Whichever one you want. And that's why we've got Hollow Hill? That is why we have Hollow Hill. Fair enough. It worked. I think Ivan played it himself in a tournament a few weeks ago. Uh, he streamed his progress. Okay. Um, I don't believe it exactly the same, but it's very similar. Okay. So um, where can you see those games if you're interested in seeing more of this deck? Ivan's Twitch. Yeah. I don't know the link or anything, but yeah, if you if you want to, maybe I'll link it to the video. Um, just put a comment in the comment, <laughs> and I'll link the link. <laughs> nice and nice and organised. Well done, Richard. <clears throat> Should we run through the actual deck itself, though? Good idea. Yeah. So uh, we'll look at plots first. Um, Plot-wise, I mean, it's pretty pretty nasty, really. I mean, you've got two March, you've got Naval, uh, Unexpected Delay, Valamogulis. So it's uh, really sort of focusing on trying to keep your opponent down by the looks of it. Yeah, concentration on keeping your opponent's resources down, not just on the board, with uh, March and Valar, but Ravages of War also uh, hurts the opponent board, Shadows and the Hand. Mm. Uh, naval Superiority obviously hit their gold, um, which keeps their board down, hopefully. Unexpected Delay reduces the board too. So, yeah, Cat and Copper seems important to reform your hand for all the good stuff. Because there isn't you know, a great deal of natural draw. And with Hollow Hill, you're always trying to we cover the tempo loss. Yeah. Yeah, that seems fair. Um, it's a little bit light on characters, but um, that's mostly because you're not really meant to be using your own characters. You kind of want to steal <coughs> other people's, right? That is the end game. So what we've got in there that sort of helps us steal, I mean, I guess we've got um, Cold Hands. Um, you've got things like the Recruiter for the Watch. Uh, Yoren's in there. And then the main thing, of course, is the uh, the events that helps you sort of steal things from your opponent's discard pile. Yeah, I was going to say, the characters aren't really there for the steal. They're, they're there for the challenge um, win generally and to set up the game. So the Age Craftsman go to fetch uh, one of those many locations and p p put it into play for free. Mm -hmm. Ari is, yeah, again, challenge control in terms of blocking and then bringing her back to the hand for the card draw. Archivist, I find very interesting. Um, Archivist normally shuffles things back into the deck, right? Yeah. Which you kind of don't want to do. Well, you kind of can do. If the discard pile is clogged full of characters and then you want to get rid of it, you use the Archivist to get rid of the entire discard pile. And then if you can target discard something 
That's um, true. So there is, like, now my watch begin. Uh, if you can target discard in some way or queen's crown, then you can get a juicy target because it's the only thing left for the wall. Mm. I presume that possibly is the justification. Cold hands we know is good for taking away an opponent character or a dupe ready for the Valar Morgulis. Are there any um, other characters in there that you think uh, play an important part? I mean, what do you think about the... Um, you've got like the Shadows characters there, haven't you? Like Forest Patrol, they go into Shadows, don't they? And uh, Janos Slint as well? They do, yeah. So Forest Patrol and Janos, they can all go into Shadows. You've got locations which allow you to kneel them when they're not being used. So like the Bay of Seals, you're not always in a position to use that, but if you have it on the board, you can kneel it for your Forest Patrol to come out and play. Mm. Same with Blackbird and East Watch, um, and also Hardheim, I guess. So that can help with Forest Patrol. Janos allows you to get rid of any character, really. Um, if you have to steal your opponent Chud, you can bring Janos out of Shadow, sacrifice that Chud, have a Janos. Seems th- better, right? <laughs> yeah. I think the most important things character-wise in the deck, Age Craftsman, Messenger Raven, and Three Finger Hob, mm. because obviously the Ravens and Hob keep you in cards. The Craftsman helps you build your board quicker. Yeah, and then at that point, hopefully you can be using your Recruiter and Yoran and Guarding the Realm, Night Gathers, Bound for the War, all those things in addition to the wall to take your opponent resources. Seems like you've uh, got this very well thought through. Maybe. <laughs> uh, to Craven. Um, I mean, Craven's uh, always good in any deck, right? If uh, you've got an annoying character, they don't <coughs> want to be racking up the renown too quick. Yeah, I, don't, I wonder with the justification of the two Craven. Um, people would normally run three, right? Mm. So, I don't know, maybe because they've got so much board control in terms of uh, plots that Craven is not strictly necessary. Yeah, that's true. I mean, um, you know, if you Craven someone and then play Marched, that character's probably the one that's getting Marched, right? Mm. I do like the reserve boosting theme you have here with Sam Tarly, Blackbird, Eastwatch by the Sea. Um, they boost your reserve, which obviously helps you to trigger Hob and the Messenger Raven reliably and keep you in cards, but mm-hmm. also um, help you with Night Gathers where you need to have a higher reserve than your opponent. Oh, yeah, of course. And doesn't the Hollow Hill also give you um, a reserve boost? Or my... No, that's initiative boost, isn't it? It does give you a reserve boost. It does boost. give you a reserve oh, oh, there you go. Yeah. So, yeah, lots of things joining together to help you with that. Hmm. Um, with regards to the events, was there anything else you wanted to talk about? Um... No, let's move on. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to the Stark deck. <clears throat> so this was submitted by Voita. Um, Voita was in London for a bit, but he's... Where's he gone now? Czech Republic. Czech Republic? I believe. Yeah. Gone Which may be where he came from. Yeah, I didn't... I think he was originally in England, was he? <laughs> I don't believe so. Came over for a bit. It was nice to have him. Um, we have then uh, the deck that he was submitted, um, played by yourself, Richard. Should we run through the plots? Um, sure. Yeah. So we've got your, um, your sort of standard at the gates opener there, um, or possibly trading, depending if you've got something really good you want to put out. Um, Jewel is an interesting inclusion. Mm-hmm. Um, the deck itself, I mean, looking at sort of character cost, I guess the only thing it's really got that's possibly hit by it is the big cat. Yep, one cat. Yeah, so if she's not out, um, which you probably wouldn't play Jewel if she was out, um, then it's pretty safe to play Jewel, I guess. And sort of controls things like the big so you're getting grey joints, stuff like that. Um, exchange, a bit of card draw, always good. Fallen. Yeah. What do you think about that one? Yeah, it seems good. Yeah. Uh, flea bottom pile especially, because there are three flea bottom in the deck. Right. So, um, yeah, playing four and putting something in the, the discard pile ready for flea bottom and getting seven gold seems pretty good to me. Yeah. See. Flea Bottom is pretty good with Faith Militant because it's always nice to have that threat on every single challenge that you can just overcommit on defence, win the challenge, trigger Faith Militant, still one of their powers. So that's two power swing just for the one goal from Flea Bottom and the use of a character. Mm. Yeah, not very fun to face against I mean, when you have to try and uh, 
take that into account in your challenges. I mean, you do have to have other um, the seven characters involved. You could just put the power on them, but even so. Oh yeah, of course. <clears throat> but even if um, you know, even if it's only that one character, at the end of the day, you're still getting rid of a power off the other person's board. True. Which is always good, right? Always good. Um, March to the wall. Um, I think marched and fallen to me are kind of ways almost to protect some of your characters from, um, you know, like negative attachments and things like that. So if you've got like a craven on your aria, for example, you can march her or fall on her and then she's in the flea bottom pile. You can play out a fresh one or you can put her in flea bottom. Um, so it's a bit of attachment control as well, I think. So it's Skagos. Mm, yes, you of course. You just off the same way, um, get rid of one aria, aria, pick up another. So, yeah, there are, it's quite flexible, there are options. Mm. And with your um, quite low cost curve as well, you've got Valor to High Risk. Um, it's a lot better for you than it is for your opponents normally. Um, so you should be able to keep quite a few sort of smaller characters, whereas your opponent will probably be losing some. Should we run through the characters then? So 34 characters... Um, in a Stark deck, it seems slightly light, but then you've got Flea Bottom, so... It's a Faith Militant deck, and I don't think you need to be heavy on the characters in the Faith Militant deck. Okay. Um, the first thing I'd look when there are fewer characters than normal would be the draw. Yeah. So you have exchange of information in the plot deck, but you also uh, you have that one copy of LMHR Arya, uh, that would draw your cards, uh, Judge and Reed, who also draws, you know, one card per round, providing he was knelt. Uh, you also have the two summer to recur something dead to your hand and three umber loyalist. I just realised there's three different versions of Arya. There is. So one's like normal Arya, one's kill everything Arya. What's the other one? The other one's a shadows Arya. When she comes out of shadows, you put five prayer tokens on opponent's ah. characters. And when one of them dies, you can stand her and draw a card. That was it. I forgot about that one. Quite nice. <laughs> so, yeah, there's plenty of draw there. Hmm. You've got a bit of control as well. So you've got your begging brother to stop your opponent's um, sort of important um, reactions and things like that. And you've got a brand there to help stop any annoying events. And core cat as well, of course, if she's in the challenge, means that your opponent's not going to be able to do anything annoying as well. So you've got a few little bits and bobs in there to sort of help you control things. It does seem a little bit um, bitty with the characters. There's a lot of, like, one-off things. Um, but I think if you're sort of marching or valadying or stuff like that, I guess it's not as important to have multiples. It's it's good to have multiples maybe of the seven characters, if anything, to try and sort of encourage the um, agenda to be able to trigger. Yeah, and there aren't really that many the seven traded characters. Mm. Um, I think there are about nine. Okay. Um, Begging Brother, Devout Free Rider, Cat, of course, Septon Mordain. Yeah, I can't, I can't see any other ones other than what you've said. Um, but sometimes, you know, you, you don't need masses, just the threat of having one on the board um, to defend with, for example, is a, a bit of a pain in the ass. <laughs> so, it's, so it's very much a Stark deck with a few Faith Militant themes in it. Mm. In it. What does the Faith's Decree do? Um, it's the... Uh, event where you have to have uh, the seven character or location on the board and you play it and you name a card and your opponent cannot trigger abilities of that card. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. I mean, as as a one-of in the deck, how effective do you think that that is? It's just a nice to have card. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it will do a job. It's not amazing. It's the 61st card for sure. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, anything you want to say on any of the locations? Or? Not especially. There's Econ, there's Flea Bottom, and you've got the useful one of Last Hearth, Carhol, and Isle of Ravens, uh, along with the three Skagos. So, yeah, pretty toolboxy. The attachment, three ice and two marriage pack, kind of gives you an idea that um, it's not just a normal passive power. I'm going to stall and just drag power out of you, Faith Militant, going to be a little bit more aggressive. Mm. Yeah. So, um, is everything, um, is there anything else you want to talk about the deck or are you happy to go on to the actual game? Let's go to the game. Cool, let's do that then. 
So on the left then, um, I'm playing the Night's Watch Hollow Hill, and on the right, uh, Richard there with the um, Stark Faith. I see you're using my uh, my lovely world's map. I think you'll find it the house map. Uh, I'm pretty sure I won that one. I see you're using my wonderful Night's Watch white tree stunning piece of art i i like mine better <laughs> don't know i can't even see anything on it really it might be a dog on a hill but mine look at the look at the tree look at those wonderful reds and greys amazing <laughs> are we going to fight over who's got the best play mat no <laughs> so your setup's amazing oh yeah Bugger all. Whereas I've got five cards. Seems really good. Skagros, Rosewood, Northern Armoury, Bran, and a Tumblestone Knight. Yeah, that's a really nice setup. Mm -hmm. Five Excellent cards. Setup. Bit of economy. Haha. <laughs> so, naval again at the gates, which seems okay. I mean, I've got a board. Mm. And I've got some economy still coming. And I have a stand with my Northern Armoury. So I'm only going to get two gold plus whatever I put without the gate, which is gate to the moon. So I'm going to end up with four gold. You're going to get six. Yes. So I, I, mean, don't, I don't. I think that's not a bad position for me to be in. Yeah, I mean you've you've got six cards on the board. Um, so even with me stopping you getting that extra bit of gold, it still means um I've got a lot of catching up to do gold wise because you're going to have your setup now. Um, <clears throat> and like you say, I'm, in, I'm only getting six gold, which I'm not going to be able to do very much with. Certainly not catch up to the same board state as you. Do you think Ravages of War might have done some work as an opening plot? That would have given you an eight gold start, mm. and you would have got a card, a, a card off my board and a card out of my hand. Possibly. I've only got two characters in hand, and one's a Cold Hands and one is a Citadel Archivist. And with me going first, with a heart tree grub, that gives me five resources mm -hmm. to play the Great John. Nice. I'm pretty pleased about the brand. Yeah, that's really annoying. Especially as it's a one of as well in the deck. I didn't realise that when we were playing. Banter. I was just about to say, where did your Great John go? <laughs> I bent him. <laughs> So putting out a Northern Armoury. For two gold. Yeah, I think I remember. I think I asked you about it and then mm. you weren't sure. I'm pretty sure that's a one gold there. I mean, you've looked at it, so you've not told me to put one back. Oh, I think you were actually Googling it as well. I might be. Yeah, so that's interesting because the gold value of my plot is zero, which means all the other attendant pieces are four. Mm. So your queen's crown me now. I'm pretty sure I put a gold back shortly because I think I think you are asking someone or searching for it online. Probably just bringing up the card online. Mm. So what is that in the Queen Crown? I've got a Tricon, so that might be Arya. Yeah, it was an Arya, um, I think it was a Flea Bottom and yeah. a Sansa. Correct, yeah. And you want to guard the realm. So that I means mean, Sansa is going in the bin to be brought out of the bin. Mm. But hopefully you've got another character that can go onto the board, otherwise Sansa will die. Well, that's kind of why. Oh, yeah. okay. There you go. That's why you just confirmed it. So I just put one back. I'm pointing to my location so that the camera knows that that's why I'm putting it back. So yeah, sounds are in the bin and trying to play the event and kind of seeing if I can get rid of the brand as well because I've got other events I'd like to use. Okay, you're trying to tempt it out. Hmm. You're a little sneaker. <laughs> yeah. And you're sort of debating whether or not just to let me have the Sansa so I can't do my other tricks. Well, I think that would be fair. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's going to die anyway, so it's not like you're going to do a challenge back at me. But you give her to me, and I was like, that. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, it was a bit sad that it wasn't like a slightly juicier target, but... 
like an umber loyalist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, whoever I took was going to be dying. Um, I thought the Sansa was a good shout because, I mean, she's a nice one to have die early. Okay. They, they tend to be more than a one-off in the deck. Oh, yeah, I think there's two sounds in the deck, one of each. Mm. So, yeah, Great John goes straight in, just murders Sansa unceremoniously. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, like, maybe if I take your Sansa, you might not do the military, and you're like, nah. <laughs> Great John just doesn't give a shit. No, just killing off his niece? Just give me my unopposed. No, not niece. Is it niece? No. It's Great John. How's Great John related to him? He's just another house of House Umber. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm thinking of um, the Blackfish, aren't I? Ah, uh, yes, you are thinking of the Blackfish, who would indeed be Sansa's uncle. Mm. I'm cracking my knuckles in anticipation of my victory. <laughs> Give me a chance. I've got some tricks up my sleeve. you got Hard Home. That means I have to sacrifice a standing character. But it means I can sacrifice a Tumblestone Knight. Mm. Why I left him standing. Yeah, you, you originally went in with the Tumblestone Knight and then changed your mind and put Bran in. And I was a little bit sad because I was thinking, oh, I prefer to get rid of Bran. <laughs> You're going to do it anyway. Weaken my board, which seemed good given that you won marched. I yeah. won marched also. And there's a high chance that you know, Bran will at least go. Yeah. Can... But we didn't know each other's decks, did we? Um, no. So... Yeah, well, I mean, we barely know our own decks. <laughs> I know Nice Watch Hollow Hill was going to run marched. I mean, I think that's fair. I did not know that you were going to run marched. But that's because I'm not very good at guessing what certain decks run. <laughs> well, I wouldn't have guessed that from start face, to be honest. Mm. So I decided to go for the march. Like I say, I kind of want that brand off the board because um, I don't know if you remember, but my hand is full of a lot of uh, events and locations. So mm, I'm kind of wanting to be able to do stuff. Yep. I've got plenty of economy. Mm. I am swimming in monies. Yeah, you and now cards. really don't care about uh, <laughs> me trying to make your board smaller because you can just play out everything again and now you get more cards to fill your hand anyway. Not the perfect exchange? No, but you're definitely getting a winter is coming. Yeah, I'm also getting a dupe for Skagos <laughs> and probably the Winterfell steward. Yeah. Correct. Well, I'm not going to give you a good card. Winterfell Steward is a good card for me at the moment because it's March protection. Mm, that's also true. Both my own marched and your marched. <laughs> so yeah, not not too bad. Bit of claim soak for all of that military on my side. Yeah, for all the patrols the thing though, you can just for two cost. You can nail your Queen Crown and bring it out. This is true. A devout free rider, and I forget what the location is because I wasn't looking at it. I think it was last half. Was it? I'm trying to understand what the character was. Oh, Cold God. hand and no other characters. Oh, no, no, there's an archivist. Is there? Yeah. And then there was an iron bank will have its due. Um, that was also. Oh, the, the one that you do in dominance where you get rid of someone. Mutiny. Yeah, I think that was in there. I've got all the options. Mm. I have Jojen, I have Cat, I have a begging brother. Yeah, I just have a lot of cards in hand. Yeah, right, just rub it in. <laughs> and a marriage pact, so if you do have an impactful character that I don't want participating against me, which isn't going to be this round, but I do have an option. Mm. So I could play out the Archivist and then play out Cold Hands and steal your Great John, right? Yeah. The only problem is, as soon as I lose the military, <laughs> yeah. he goes back and makes it a bit shit. I'm Queen's crowning, so it looks like I'm trying to find something of yours. Huh. <laughs> huh. Oh. John huh. Snow. Guess John Snow will do. The good John Snow. <laughs> What's this event called? Now my watch begin. Ah, and is that when a character hits a discard pile? Of um, high cost or lower. Oh, okay. Then you, is it you pay two to get them? Correct. Cool. It gives me just enough gold then. 
so that I can have... Whoa. Why are you doing this to me? Yeah, you see, the issue is... <laughs> um, do you remember the event that I gave you? <laughs> I certainly do. Yeah. And unfortunately, I can't afford to put out another character. So and I, I don't have another character to put out anyway. I need to put out more military. Mm-hmm. Or you can just be a dick, which is what you are. Because I remember what you do now. Oh, yeah. What do I do now? Jeff Marshall at Tumblestone Night. Mm-hmm. No drama. Mm-hmm. Ah. Laughed. Ah. <laughs> I was just checking out which the strength was. Yeah, now what? This is where you be a dick. I really don't know what you mean. No? No idea, love. Okay. You're going to enlighten us? Well, you're going to enlighten us in a moment when you play the card. Yeah, but this is the commentary. We need to be more dynamic. Oh, oh wow, that was a dick move, playing know, that Rose right? Road. Oh, my word. Friggin' Rose Road, Richard. Well, bloody hell, Rebecca. How could you do that to me? Is that what me? you meant? Yeah, that's what I meant. You're ridiculous. A Rose Road. Oh, sorry. A friggin' Rose Road and a marriage pact. Which is a little bit annoying. It means that I can't do a military against you now. <laughs> Surprise. And I was I can't defend a military. Would you want to have done a military? Well, I've got a, another plan. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Well, they did ruin my original plan, which isn't as good. It's fine. Everything is fine. Yeah. It's all good. Totally. I mean, if I kill Jon Snow, it's like claiming my, some of my own board, too. Exactly. If you want to no kill Jon, you can kill him. So you can just wipe my board with a second marched. <laughs> Easy. I'm like, I'll do a power. Maybe he'll defend it. Or maybe not, and like, I can do some tricks. Wait, I have a thing. Oh, right, okay. What's your thing? I'm going to give you back Jon Snow. No? Back to my hand. But because the mar pack, marriage pack you have to sacrifice. Oh, I killed it. Why did I put it in the dead pile? What a dog. Wow. You know what? If you had a Sansa... <laughs> Say what? Then that would be really important. Oh, yeah, what did I do? Bound for the wall? Yeah, that's nice. Oh, yeah. I like it. Shouldn't unoppose me. You've got a choice of car hold. Uh, great. Marriage pact. Uh, Flea bottom. A Begging brother. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Well, that's really good. You take Arya, right? Mm hmm. And then military me, which I have to defend, keep your cold hands safe for another day. Yeah. It's in your locations. I can't oh, wait, I've got a standy one. I forgot you had that. Ah, uh, you're fucked. Top of the neck off. Winter's coming. I re stand the bumble tumble stone night. The bumble tumble. Bumble tumble. You know, the one who goes swimming with his horse. <laughs> I mean, I guess the plus side is I'm forcing you to use your northern armory on a tumble. Which, yeah, that is the way to think of it. Like, isn't, you know... Pretty generous way to think of it. <laughs> I mean, I've got to look at the positives, right? <laughs> so I'm going for the military. You defend with a tumble and boost him with the last half so you win it. Yep. Which is sad. I'd have liked a slightly bigger character so that I could have, you know, won the military and killed a tumble. Well, therein goes the random nature of Bound for the Wall. Yeah. So use your Northern Armoury, send the tumble, do the military, increase the claim. So yeah. two claim, cold no, hands to dies, do a power challenge. And you get the great John back. <sighs> Seems good. And yeah, so you get to the power now. So I might as well defend it, because why wouldn't I? But you still win. And then my Dom. But... Dominance action! Great. <laughs> so it took me a, it took me a couple of attempts, but I got rid of him. <laughs> this is like, I don't know, I feel like this is a bit like playing L5R. 
when you play L five R, the one thing I don't like about it is with Thrones you play a lot to the board, mm-hmm. and there's only a few things you can do hidden per challenge phase. You know, mm-hmm. if you're not playing shadow, but L five R is constant game of one upmanship and surprises and ambush tricks, and it's a bit like playing Nice Watch Hollow Hill. Like every phase, there's something that you're doing that's really annoying. <laughs> Aww, I'm glad you find me really annoying, honey. That's all right. I'm Thanks. glad you uh, you accept your role now. <laughs> so I've not found any of my card draw stuff, so I had to go for a count and coppers. Well, that's fine. You're going to get like seven gold plus yeah. the three from me. Thanks for the trading. Is that ten gold. I mean, I'm quite happy with that. Ten gold count and coppers is nothing to be sniffed at. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to get sixteen resources worth of things to play out. So yeah, it's also true. I've got a lot in hand, and a wintery Ooh. coming, and another cat. So the sacrifice. That's a nice draw. Yeah. So the fat cat can go online soon. Mm-hmm. Not a great deal of sack tech unless I get something that's skaggosable. I can skag off the tumblestone yeah. knight to, just to get some power on cat. Yeah. And boot her strength. Yeah, I guess the risk is you know that I've got the um. What was it called? Was it mutiny? The dominance one. Um, so you know that I run that now. So it's just uh, being careful. If she, well, she is the highest cost character in your deck. Be a little bit sad if she was to disappear, wouldn't it, honey? Well, the fear is, of course, um, mutiny on Cat's dupe and then Valar next turn. Hmm. That's scary. Well, the Sif Cat has a dupe, and you know Cat's not on the board, right? <laughs> well, I do have the opportunity here. I could play the small Cat and transfer her into a big Cat. If I really wanted to put her out unprotected, mm-hmm. just to save three gold, you could say in a sense then I'm paying an extra card. Oh no, I can't because big big cat in hand now, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I can't do that. <laughs> Whatever. So we put little cat into the discard pile there, mm. and I'm playing um, what's that one? Crude. Night, Night gathers. You're gonna re- you're gonna play all my stuff in the discard pile, and there's a cat in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, this could be terrible. There's also a Great John in there, and I'm going first. So, uh, you know, in my head, it makes sense to get Great John. Yep. For this one round, he will be a restanding bicon with Intimidate. Exactly. Sounds good. Am I right? It does. Annoyingly so. How much gold do you have? you got you got enough of Great John and Cat. I do, but I kind of want to get a couple of characters out. So we're going to go for the Great John. And what else are we going for? Bran might be good, seeing as you're running Winter is Coming. But then you cannot get Cat. That's what I mean. I was, I think I was always going to go for a couple of characters. Like I wanted to get more out. Okay. I also didn't know how many Bran you had, so I thought marshalling Bran means that you can't marshal him. Didn't really get one. Funny enough, I didn't know how many brand I had on. <laughs> oh, so you got the aged craftsman. Yeah, how much does he cost? Three. Three. So he might have been good to have done first. Mm. Then you'd know if you had an underground vault. Now you can trigger it for two more gold. Yeah. And if you'd have done that first, you would have had um, four gold instead of the brand. And you could have taken the cat. That's true. That would significantly well, again, like I said, disrupt I, my plan. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know that you had cat in hand, obviously, and I kind of wanted to just to get a board presence because I didn't feel like I'd had one all game. And then you played out the cat, and I was just like, no! <laughs> Bloody typical. Yeah, but not only that. Look how much gold you still got left. And a two. I think my original plan might have been to skag off a little cat into big cat, but then I drew the big cat. Hmm. Yeah, the dupe's a little bit annoying, because as soon as you played her out, I was like, oh, well, I'll just fell at you. And then you put the dupe on, I was like, oh, it's annoying. So I'm going to bestow the begging brother. It's nice to stop the great John shenanigans. Yeah, I mean, it stops my great John, stops me from being able to use the bran. Um, so that was a bit sad. Like, the main reason I actually got them. Devout free rider, which is going to mm. stop your iron banky shenanigans too. Oh, yeah, because that's one where you can't gain gold, isn't it? Correct. I think I've only got two Iron Banks in this deck, and I've already seen one, so... 
Yeah, I, well, don't I don't want to see Iron Bank into bound for the wall again. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. So going from military with the great drum and the tumble. Wow, no fuss from you. You're going straight in. Yeah, so oh. I'm attacking for seven there, right? Yep. I can't block it, even with the last tile. You're defending for oh, seven. Oh, yeah, I can. Do that with three, three riders of three strength. Oh, are they? Hmm. But is your last half two or three? Three. Why is it three? Because if you have fewer than three plots in your use part, there are only two. Ah, that's annoying. So you win the military. Can't you trigger the devout free rider, the faith thingy, to steal a power now? Yeah. Are you saving it to do it on cat instead? Um, yeah. <laughs> that's the logic. That was totally what you intended, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you're doing a power... <laughs> yeah! How do you feel about that? You're an absolute dork. Oh, I, I just am do it on cat. so shit with faith melody. <laughs> this might be where I think, oh, bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, I'll do an intrigue anyway. Yeah, is he going in? That was sad. That was sad. I just got some cards back in hand. Not even very many cards. You know what people fear? Winter is coming on military. Mm. But it's actually give me more satisfaction to play it on the Intrigue. Yeah, it's really depressing when you play it on the Intrigue and it's just like, oh, wow, that character I would have quite liked to have next turn. Because I'm not getting it. Mm. So... I mean, it's even sweeter if you can get that start in Stark Reigns where you, you, you win the Intrigue Challenge, you flip into Reigns, you flip into Spider's Web, mm. and then on your second Intrigue Challenge you go three claim with Winter is Coming. That's nice. That's just me. Because then you know the next plot's going to be a draw plot, right? <laughs> so um, I think I've got another mutiny. Is it mutiny? The one that discards a character. Hmm. Um, I'm debating whether or not to use it on cat. And then Valar. Hmm. After that's a good play. Because you'll get probably nine gold next round. But yeah. Not many card to play with it. Yeah, that's the thing. I'll, I'll only have one card in hand. So I'm going to be um, really relying on the top deck if I Valor. And it means Great John's back and alive. Which is a little bit sad. So, yeah, I think I kind of broadcast as well. Um, quite obviously, if I'm trying to get rid of the dupe off a cat. Um, so you're deciding now whether or not you want to just get rid of her. Or if you want to discard the dupe. Um, you do have Fallen, so one thing that you can do is just discard the dupe is what you've done. Um, if you think I'm going to play Valar, play the Fallen. And then that way, if I don't play Valar, you can just chuck a chud. But it, if I do, you can save Cat. Exactly. It's a really good counterplay in this situation. Mm. Because you can save Cat if there is a Valar, and you will have loads of gold to play out the rest of your hand. And the only thing I would say um, against um, your little plan of action there is you've got two cats in the discard now. Mm -hmm. And if you've fallen big cat, mm -hmm. you don't have a way of getting her back, right? I love ravens. That's I true. really do love ravens. <laughs> you've got one Isle of Ravens in the deck. Um, mm. And if I really want to, a Citadel archivist, but I wouldn't want to put your cats back in. But she's not the only wing condition. No, but what I'm saying is, is um, you didn't have to play the Fallen here. Um, it, it, you might, it might have been nice like to possibly use it on a smaller character that you could have flea-bottomed. That is a good point. Um, you don't have flea-bottom yet. Well, I don't know if you've got any hand or not. But um, yeah, it might have been nice to put something in the flea-bottom pile. Flea-bottom pile. Oh, the discard pile. Hardy ha. <laughs> so your draw then is a scepter and another default free rider. Character, good, exactly what I want at this mm. stage. I've not shown my hand, which probably means that I'm not happy with it. <laughs> yeah, you're drinking tea, hand on bump. <laughs> well, hand on bump, because she's an active little bugger. <laughs> So, so you much are gold. Going first. So much gold. Mm. Yep, master. So I think this round could make a break the game because 
you know, you've only have three cards in hand and yeah. zero claim. So you're playing very much on the defensive. Mm. You're going to have to put, by the look of it now, two characters out just to keep some kind of board. You have no more draw plots. You have no other way to draw in card unless you have Messenger Ravens and, and or Hob, but keeping them alive is difficult right now. Mm. So I feel like you're on the downward spiral and you are dying. Yeah, I don't know whether that Valar <coughs> um, was the best idea at that point. You've recovered really well. You've got a board with four characters out and you've got all those locations to support them as well. Um, and I was basically top decking. So I don't know if maybe I shouldn't have Valard at that point. But then I you also... could have waited another round, I guess, because I'm not in danger of winning the game. Yeah, yeah, it's also true. And I wouldn't have got a duplicate for Cat Cather in the discard pile. Again, also true. So yeah, that's a good point. So um, yeah, I don't know. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't think that the Valor was the best play, and as you can see, I'm not marshalling anything either. You know, if I feel like my play is really telegraph, like if I were playing the Nice Watch Hollow Hill deck, mm. and I'm muting it to get rid of a cat. I can see it can't be duplicated. I would, I think I would 100% not play the Valar. Okay. Because I just hate being telegraphed. Mm. I hate, I wouldn't want my opponent to say, ha, I knew that was coming. Yeah. I'd yeah. be like, well, screw you then. I'm not okay. <laughs> but Jurgen's going to stand, so that could net you a card. Yeah, I mean, you're just taking a card, so maybe I'll get one back. So, doing the military with a devout free rider, which goes through unopposed. Nothing to claim. And then for dominance, I definitely win Dom. <laughs> what, like 10 gold, whatever it is. <laughs> which is perfect because then I get a pouch still. Yeah. You see some queens going on you? To Arya, Umbaloyas, and Summer. So, I don't mind the Arya going back into your deck because Arya's dead, right? Didn't I steal Arya from you at one point? So she's oh. So I think she's dead now. Yeah, I think she's dead. Um, so Arya going back in the deck is fine. Um, looks like I've put the Ember Loyalist in there. Am I? Mm -hmm. Is that the Arya? No, it is Ember Loyalist. Yeah. yeah, it is an Ember Loyalist, Jojen. Oh, Flea Bottom, Dolores Ed. Well, I'll add the Flea Bottom. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah, that does seem seem good for you. You've got a lot of characters in there now that you can flee bottom. Um, so just another way that you can make my life miserable. You do such a good job of it already, honey. Just another way. <laughs> so what have I'm I ready. got left? What's taking you so long? I'm just trying to think what Ravages else I've got of left. War, another marched. An unexpected, unexpected delay. Which What's might have been good again? turn one, to be honest. What does that one do again? Um, each character, each player picks a character without attachment or power, and they return to the opponent's hand. Return to the owner's hand. And when does that happen? Does that happen straight away? Beginning of the challenge phase. Ah, right, okay. So yeah, maybe I didn't because I maybe was thinking about marshalling something. Another great John. And the faith decree. <laughs> Even I looked at it after I showed the camera. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> I mean, it makes sense, right? It's not one that you see that often. No. So, you are the first player. I mean, you got a great John. Do you play it now? Intimidate's always good, right? What am I going to intimidate? Well, like, when you're first, you think I might be actually playing some cards out this turn. I think my turn would be predicated on maybe icons. So now I have two military... Two Intrigue and three Power Icons. That feels like a good spread of icons. Mm. Now I have, also have a Flea Bottom. That feels fine for whatever you're going to marshal with your potentially 11, 12 gold. Yeah, you're saving four gold. Um, so you could have another Winter is coming. Um, but that's probably the only thing. So Winter is coming and Flea Bottom maybe? Of course, Flea Bottom trigger is likely. Yeah, yeah. Card and shadows, eh? Yeah, well, I figure I can... Um... It's always Janos. Even though you've got more Forest Patrol, it's always Janos. Sure. It can only ever be Janos. Can't be Pinch. 
<laughs> I definitely got you. Was that was that the other Night's Watch game? Might have been. Where I got you with Pinch? Might have been. <laughs> and you were like, it's definitely Janos. And I was like, sure it is, buddy. It's always <laughs> Janos. Every time the Night's Watch player puts a card in the shadows, it can only be Janos. I was so sad when you played this card. Yeah, so I named Forest Patrol. <laughs> <laughs> but you absolute dick. <laughs> Because guess what's in the shadows, honey? Well, I did think there was a reason you left Queen Crown dead. All right, screw you. Hashtag. Telegraphing my plots. Got em. Telegraphing my shadows character. Yeah, well, I used to play the game quite a lot. Did you? I, yeah. didn't, I didn't know that. Which meant I got an idea of how the game worked. I think you just read me really well, regardless. No, nah, I don't. Even if I wasn't telegraphing quite so obviously. If that's true, why do you have a better record than me? No, I don't. Especially at Worlds. Yeah, at Worlds. But you've definitely got <clears throat> a higher win rate than me. What, not get me against you? Yeah, you do. Do I? Oh, yeah, I just wanted to hear you say it. Oh, you're such a dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I, did I get you? Did I flea bomb? Uh, you've done an intrigue and got a dupe for my queen's crown at hand, which I wasn't too bothered about seeing going. And then you've just flea bottomed the umber loyalist to draw some cards. I wonder why I did that. And you're going in for military with both. And I can't even stop it being unopposed. But now I can get rid of your shit. Yay, forest patrol. Fuck you, man. Good old Malister. Fuck you, man. Top banter, that man. <laughs> and of course, Malister doesn't get any renown because um, non-the faith characters can't get any power, right? Correct. Which I totally realised when I was editing before and didn't, you know, accuse Richard of being a dork and forgetting his renown or anything. Hmm. Yeah. Now your queen's crowning. Put the sand in the bin. Yeah, she's dead anyway, right? And maybe you want to keep her in my deck then, which you do. Yeah. Makes sense. Loyalist goes away, must discard two cards from hand. You must have more than eight gold. Why would you say that? Because you win on. Ah, right. Because if I win on, then why were you doing this? Why would you concede? Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I had ten. Wow. Yeah. The problem it. problem being is like, I, I thought oh, I'll put the card in shadows because then I can bring it out of shadows and at least either defend the military or you might not go in with quite enough and I might be able to like defend and win the military, which would be really cool. What you bring um, out of shadows after you, I've done my challenges? Yeah, if Mace, if uh, Malister wasn't used. Mm. But yeah. Oh, yeah. The thing is, like, whatever I put out, you're just going to kill them, which is sad. Hello, the house. Yeah. Yeah, why not? What does Marriage's of War do again? Um, each player discard a character or location from play, discard a card from their hand, and discard the card from their shadow area. Mm. If able. So I wanted the um Valadi to go first. Um just because, you know, if you do decide to get rid of a character instead of location for some strange reason, these are the sm smaller board, but you've got plenty of locations to get rid of, so you just got rid of a northern armory. And then another northern armory from hand. <laughs> Surprise. Does that mean you've got a third in there as well? No, there's only two in the deck. Ah, okay. But I thought I'd keep Jojen with the power of stealth. He seems the most important right now. Hmm. Because you've got the nice, tantalising, juicy power. Yeah. Yeah, you just need uh, just need one to steal, don't you? I mean, I've got six strength on defence in just Malice during last half. I draw an ice by the look of it. <laughs> look at that shit. <laughs> Why haven't you conceded? Um, Why haven't you put yourself out of the misery? I think because... Because you're getting smashed. I had a couple of good goes. I had a couple of little tricks. I got really a great draw like five times. Oh, you're such a dick. <laughs> you know, you can edit the next video. Wow. You Actually, really no, I wouldn't want that to happen. 
I wouldn't put the viewers through that. Ruin your own <laughs> reputation. Just to humble oil it and away. Well, cool, I guess. Yeah, and Loyalist might be nice. Yeah, so this is game over. I don't see, feel like you've really got into it. Um, the start just didn't quite work out for you. Yeah, I feel like my card draw is just a little bit jilted, and I probably didn't play things in the right order. I've, I, I don't really play this kind of deck at all. So Maybe um, the aged craftsman and getting the underground vault before you play Night Gathers might have been important. Because if you did get the vault with the craftsman, then you could play Night Gathers and get Great John Cat and and a smaller character. That yeah, might, I mean, that would, would have stopped me playing Cat. That would have. Yeah, and I guess if you game. hadn't played Cat, then I wouldn't have Fallard next turn. So, yeah, a few things I could have done differently. But I mean, you know, I'm still, I'm still struggling through. I mean, I can totally defend your. <laughs> Stealth power challenge. <laughs> Taking the Umber Loyalist is good because you get cards. I mean, that was that was the idea. That, that was definitely the idea. The card draw you desperately needed. Yeah, um, but looking at what I've put on the board, look how shit it is. <laughs> well, you can't military me now. You can't win a power challenge. No. You've lost. <clears throat> I have definitely lost, which is why I'm very shortly going to concede... Um, I'm just uh, kicking and screaming my way to the loss. So, um, well done, Rebecca. Thank you, thank you. I'm how really. You, how do you feel? I I apologise to Ivan. You're probably watching the game, saying, "Rebecca, what the hell are you doing? Don't play it in that order." Well, I thank Voita for his mastermind creation, wonderful start faith deck, <laughs> which allowed me to smash Rebecca live for this game. I mean, live. Live. People are watching it as they breathe. As they are listening. <laughs> yes, it's live to them. Um, so yeah, I mean, we hope you enjoyed the game. Um, we'll just have a look at pros and cons then for us for the deck. Yep. Um, so we'll pop those on the screen now. Okay. So the Night's Watch deck then. Um, I mean, there was, there was a lot that we liked about the deck, wasn't there? Yeah, conceptually, there were things that we liked. Hmm. You want to talk on Storm? Uh, sure. I like that the deck has a clear aim. You know what you want to do with the deck. Um, you know you want to reduce your opponent's board as much as possible in the early game while setting up your backboard. And then in the mid to late game, you want to take over and take your opponent's characters and then, yeah, win. Attack yeah. them through unopposed challenges. So it has a clear aim and, yeah, I like that. And he was also talking about the reserve mechanism um, when we were discussing the pros and cons here. So there's a lot of ways that the deck increases its reserve. Um, and then there are a lot of cards that interact with the fact that you've got a higher reserve. So things like Three Finger Hob works with that. Um, yeah, so with the more reserve boosting effects you have, like Blackbird, Eastwatch, Sam Tarly, Knights of the Hollow Hill, mm. um, make it much more likely to trigger Hob. Yeah. Uh, which is nice because that means you get a guaranteed two card per round and it also works well with the night gathers um which you have to have a higher reserve than your opponent to play mm. and yeah that works really well um there's lots and lots of ways in the deck to um you know apply pressure to your opponent um so there's loads of different options so if you're not seeing you know particular options there's always something else that's popping up um and you, i mean you can see what's on there and yeah, then, you, you generally have ways to, to get rid of your opponent's characters, mm. big characters as well, um, Mutiny. Yeah, I like that one. Marched, Balon Magulis just kills everything, so if you can get rid of Duplicate, that, that's cool. Mm. You can get rid of their Claim Soap with the Recruiters. Um, yeah, there are plenty of ways to get rid of characters, and you can use cards like uh, Yoran, Bound, and Guarding the Realm to take characters. Yeah. As well as controlling the discard pile for the wall. Yeah, I think um I think it's a little bit unfortunate in this game that I didn't quite see some of the main things that make the deck tick. Like I didn't see the wall, I didn't get any of the like card draw on the board. Um so I, th I feel like that maybe let the deck down a little bit. Um I think this was the game where we had issues with recording. Mm -hmm. Um so 
we actually had the same thing happen in the other game as well, didn't we? It was just a lot longer. <laughs> yeah, it was like 90 minutes long, but essentially the same thing happened. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if that's just a consistency issue in the deck. Maybe there's just not quite enough draw to get the draw going, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Or it might just be I'm shit at playing this deck. So <laughs> Also possible. Very it does have quite a bit of draw in the deck, which I like. Mm. I mean, you've got Eastwatch. Uh, Hob and the Ravens uh, counting cops as well. Uh, it's just difficult to play them sometimes, like Hob and Ravens when you're trying to destroy the board or re reduce it with, you know, March, Mogulis, along with you know, unexpected delay cards like that, things that reduce the board presence. Sometimes it's difficult to keep them around early. Yeah, yeah, which is, you can see, is what we've got on the um, sort of negative side of things. A nice segue. Could. Well, I was just going to not segue oh. and say um, <laughs> the thing with Messenger Raven is when you've got them on the board, they're likely the first thing dying to claim soap, especially mm. with the you know lower number of characters you have. So, yeah, a little mm. bit risky. Um, we were saying that um, seed preps might be a nice um, inclusion into the deck. Yeah, I think it's a natural inclusion to the deck. With so many reserve boosting options, it's not unreasonable to have a siege prep turn with a reserve of seven, eight, maybe even nine, ten, mm. you know, if the stars align. And so, yeah, the opportunity is there. It's more gold than counting copper, but you do get a delay on the cards. Yeah. So, you know, there's a trade-off. But I think siege preparation is a really good fit for this deck. Yeah, I mean, certainly in this game, you saw that I was running out of cards um, and top decking quite a bit towards the end. So would definitely have helped, I think. Yeah, the other good thing I like about Siege Prep is uh, you draw, draw the card in the dominance phase, which mm. is the same phase you want to use Mutiny. Ah. So you can draw, you know, if you're down to, like, say, one card and you're drawing up to seven or eight, then there's quite a lot of opportunity to draw the Mutiny when you need it and you don't have to worry about it being taken for Intrigue Claim. That's a very good that point. always happens. <laughs> they always take the card you need. <laughs> Um, let's have a little look at the Stark deck then. So I think the main thing that we liked about this deck then was um, obviously Fat Cat is a fantastic reason to sort of have a faith deck. Um, you know, she's uh, seven traded. Um, if you're putting power on her, she's going to get bigger. Um, she's going to get stronger. And with that, it makes it more likely that she's going to be able to win challenges. It's just protecting her is the main thing, I guess. Um, but the deck does have a lot of different ways to protect her. So there's lots of different um, toolbox sort of effects in the deck, um, different ways to do things. So like um, you've got, um, oh, what's his face that sacrifices? Jory Cassell in yeah. the deck. So if it looks like she's going to die, um, if he's on the board, he can save her. Um, obviously, you've got the dupes. Um, you've got the action of using Skagos on a smaller version of it to go and get the big fat cat. Um so you've got a few different ways to sort of protect her. Um, same as if she gets any negative attachments on her, you can skagos her um, to get another version. Although, that said, the deck doesn't really like to get her out early. Because no. it wouldn't want to uh, get pinned on its own duel. Because a lot of faith decks, they run a little bit slow. And if you have to play your 7th plot and it duel and cats on the board, your opponent, if they have a 6 or 7 cost character, your cat's going to die. Mm. That wouldn't be so good. Yeah, um, Skagos, I like Skagos in this deck mm -hmm. um, with different options for Sansa and Aya as well as Fleabottom. So Fleabottom's really good with Skagos, um, I find, because you should Fleabottom someone in. Um, like little Aya, you can Skagos her into a different version and keep her on the board. Yeah. Which is nice. Also good with Umber Loyalist, which I like as... Um, an option in this deck because with the downside you can discard card that you would use for flea bomb. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, like you say, you can Skagos and Beloyalist, um, then you know, discard cards that feed the flea bottom pile, flea bottom in the Umbeloyalist to get more cards, and when it goes again, you can feed the discard pile with flea bottom targets. So, and Plenty some of can bring things back. Yeah. And you've also got that Isle of Ravens in the deck as well. If there's anything that falls in the discard pile, they don't really want to be in there. Nice. Um, the other thing that we liked about the deck was it's a lot more aggressive than some Stark Faith decks. Um, sometimes they can be quite passive, but this deck includes a lot of ways to sort of put the pressure on your opponent. 
Yeah, so Voyager doesn't go all in on the seven tech. You know, there's no three faith decree and you know all the other the seven options that you have the most devout and the highest power and stuff like that. You know, he he selected specific card that he feels the deck needs. Mm. Uh, like the the free rider, probably there more for the icons um, than it is for the uh, effect. But seven traded begging brothers because they're really good. Cat and scepter. That's really it. Um, but it does mean that you can have a bit more aggression with the other selection because it's got Great John, mm. Malister, of course, Umber Loyalist. All of those can take ice. Yeah, yeah, it seems seems absolutely fair. Um, we weren't sure if maybe there were slightly too few seven traded characters. True. Um, so it might be nice to get a couple of extra ones in there. Um, but like you say, the the deck can work fine without having loads of them. So maybe a couple more, but it's not like a massive deal. Yeah, um, I could definitely see there might be some time where you won't have a seven traded character on the board, which mm. would be not ideal. Yeah, I think there was a couple of rounds where you didn't in this game. Although to be fair, I wasn't making it easy for you. Some decks won't. Hmm. Um, and the only other thing that we weren't sure about is, um, I mean, you mentioned Jewel being like a potential issue, um, but it can also be a dead plot. Um, you know, it's sometimes you're just not going to want to use it um, or it's not going to be a plot that you need to use. I guess um, you have to do the, the risk reward situation. Would you be happy with a plot that works all the time and is six out of ten? Or would you rather have Jewel, which is useful in two out of your five games, but they're like, nine out of ten in those five games those yeah two games sorry so. yeah i mean it might be the the difference between a win and a loss right yeah um so was there anything else that you wanted to mention with regard to stack uh no no you you were done yeah. okay cool <laughs> um well in that case um might as well wrap it up um so as always thanks everyone for watching and listening um, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by going to patreon.com forward slash the white walkers. And um, that is the Swiss done now in brackets one and two. So next we'll be following up with the um, top eight, which will be four from bracket one and four from bracket two. And you can check um, the opening screen there to see who will be facing who in bracket one. In the next game, you'll also be able to see the winners of bracket two. So if you haven't watched any of the other games yet, don't look at it. Um, but yeah, we'll try and get those games out as soon as possible. Now the laptops have been working. Yay! Woo! Yay. <laughs> so we'll see you all next time. Goodbye. Thanks, guys. Bye.